Welcome back to NRM 638 GIS programming or Python scripting for ArcGIS applications. Spring semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. This session we're going to cover two special types of containers. Uh, the first container type is a dictionary in Python, which is essentially a lookup table. And then the second container is a set, which is analogous to uh, case fields in ArcGIS, where a case field would be every unique value of some field. So if you go to the Blackboard website, go to your NRM638 class, and then go to Python scripts. And in that week one folder, we want to download a text file, Python dictionary and set containers.txt. So right mouse click and save link as or save target as and save that file to your computer. And basically that will be a text file that will look something like this. And we're going to start with dictionaries. So dictionaries are lookup containers. So then we not need to just fire up the Python interpreter window. So if we go to all programs, ArcGIS, Python 2.7, IDLE. And then we have our shell. Okay, so the first thing is we'll make a dictionary. And a dictionary is enclosed in curly braces. So basically, this starts the dictionary, and this ends the dictionary, and then it's a sequence of a key value, and then what should be associated with that key value, and then the next comma, and then the next key value, and then what value should be associated with that key. So what's inside this dictionary right now? So control C, control V, so that's what's inside this dictionary. And you can think of them as being lookup tables. So we could say, well, in that dictionary, what are the values? So those are the values, and what are the keys? So here are keys associated with each value. So the way it looks, it works is we would just, in square brackets, issue the key that we're interested in, and it will return the value associated with that key. So for example, and it does. So it's basically a lookup table, and it's a very efficient way to retrieve um, categorical information. So for example, we could use an if block to determine the UTM zone. So we could copy this. Uh, we'll first make our central meridian variable equal to negative 141. And then we'll copy and paste our if block. So it works. It returns UTM zone 7. But it's kind of awkward. It has to go, OK, if the central meridian is equal to this, then print UTM zone 5. Otherwise, if it's equal to negative 147, print UTM zone 6. Otherwise, if it's equal to negative 141, print UTM zone 7. So it's sort of an awkward way to sort of test for um, three values. It's a much more efficient way is to use a lookup table. So in the lookup table, all we would have to do is say, OK, we've got our central meridian value look up what UTM zone is associated with that key, and it returns that appropriate value. OK, we may have a value that we don't have a key for. So for example, negative 156. So now if I press Alt-P to recall my command, I get an error message because there is no key negative 156. So we have to basically check for that. And what we could do is, here would be our check. So my lookup is to have a key that's equivalent to this central meridian value. And no, it does not have that key because our central meridian value is negative 156. And my lookup has keys of negative 150, 141, 147. So we could 
in a little if statement, check for that. So control C and then control V to paste. So basically we have in this if statement, if my lookup has a key, then we would print out the central meridian. Otherwise we would print out negative 156, which is inside this variable. There's no key in our Python dictionary. So let's set our central meridian back to negative 141. And then alt P and alt P. And that time it works. So this would be an efficient way to use a lookup table or a dictionary where we don't have to go if this, else if this, else if this, else if this, else if this. It's just all in this lookup table. Okay, the other type of container I want to talk about is a set. And a set is a collection of unique values. So, for example, let's make a list. And then what's the length of our list? Okay, there's 11 items in our list, but some of the items have duplicate values. So, for example, we've got a 2013 value, a 2013 value. We've got a two. 2015 value, a 2015 value. We can use the set to say, well, how many of these values are unique? So that would be just create a set from our list, and then what's inside our set. So these are the unique values that are in our list. So it basically only keeps the first occurrence of every value that's in this list. So for example, 2013, occurs once in our set and yet it occurs twice in our list. 2015 occurs more than once in our list and it occurs once in our set. So we could say, okay, for I in our set values print I, and then it prints these unique years that were originally in our list of years. So that's analogous to using case fields in ArcGIS. And then we could basically count for each unique year, how many times does that occur in our list? So that would be this next block. So control copy, control C, control V to paste. So basically we're gonna go through, start with 2000 and then go to our list and then dot count will give us for that value of 2000, how many times 2000 occurs. And then the next I will be 2001 and then dot count 2001, how many times does that occur all the way to the last item in our list when I is 2015, dot count 2015, how many times does that occur? So then we'll just press enter to execute this. So then we come back with year 2000 occurred once, the year 2013 occurred three times, 2015 occurred three times. And we could check by looking at our original list. Then B 2015 occurred once, twice, three times. So that's analogous to using the frequency command in ArcGIS where we could say for each unique value give us the count of those values. And then we could execute this command. So get the length of our set, convert that to a string, and that will tell us how many different unique values we have. So there's seven different unique years. So 2000, 2001, five, 6, 10, 13, and 15 would be seven unique years. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, there's a quiz question for you that will lead you to the next video session.